Tonight, I'm gonna to show you eight different things that I wish I knew earlier about woodworking. The first thing is wood expansion and contraction. I wish I knew about this earlier. In middle school, I took a shop class and we built checkerboards as one of our projects. The design of this board seemed fine at the time, but over time, the expansion and contraction of the wood across the grain in this caused it to split open. At this point, there's nothing I can do to fix this except for build a new one. Wood is basically like a bunch of straws all put together. The straws suck the water from the roots of the tree up to the branches. As the wood dries, those straws shrink down in diameter. So what was once this shrinks down to this. It doesn't change much in length because as the straws dry, they shrink in diameter, not in length. On this board, the problem I have with the design is there's grain going this way and the grain here is going this way. And so when you glue those together, It'll last for a little while, but over time that expansion and that movement causes it to split. This is not ever gonna close. There's no way you can get your board stretcher and pull this across. You could try to fill it with a bunch of wood filler, but that's gonna look even funnier. Just make a new one with a better design. I have another video that goes into more depth about expansion and contraction in relation to pocket holes. I'll put the link in the description below. Another thing I wish I knew about earlier is tear out. Tear out is when you cut something across the grain and where your saw cuts across the grain, the wood splinters out. This is usually very noticeable on anything that has thin veneers on it. So plywood is a prime example where tear out happens all the time. There are ways to address this though and in many cases you can actually eliminate it altogether. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have the right blade on your saw. Now if you're cutting across the grain, more teeth is usually better. The woodworking blades that you find in the stores are gonna have a range of different tooth counts. It's usually anywhere from about 25 teeth or so up to 80 teeth. On a table saw when you're cutting with the grain, Less teeth is better because you don't usually get tear out when you're cutting with the grain and you're taking out a lot of material so it can pull more sawdust out of the cut. If your tooth count is really high when you're trying to cut with the grain, it will usually burn the wood. When you're cutting across the grain, however, higher tooth count is better. So my miter saw has an 80 tooth blade in it and this makes for really smooth cuts and if I go slow cutting that, I can usually do it with no tear out. They also have combination blades, which kind of have a middle ground of maybe 40 to 50 teeth. And that gives you a little bit of both. You can do rip cuts, you can do cross cuts. Another thing that really helps with tear out is a zero clearance insert. These are plates that you actually cut through with your blade so that it has a perfect edge. What that does is make a sharp edge so that any chips that try to tear out just break off and cut right at that edge. I have one of those on my table saw and I have one of those on my circular saw. A lot of track saws will also do this on the tracks where you actually will cut your first cut on the track saw, it will trim off an edge and then you have a nice zero clearance edge. Another thing I wish I knew about earlier and took seriously are drill countersinks and depth stops. Now what this is, is a combination of both. It has a countersink and it has a depth stop. What that does is make it so as I'm pre-drilling holes, I go down to the exact same depth every single time with the countersink. I used to do some of my woodworking with construction lumber and construction screws. That's perfectly fine to do that, but the consistency of using a depth stop with a countersink bit makes it so that all of your fasteners going in there are nice and clean. Even when the fastener looks like it'll make its own countersink, this just cuts a nice clean countersink hole and leaves a really polished look. Another thing I wish I took advantage of sooner was CA glue. When I grew up, the only brand of CA glue out there was Super Glue. Now there are many other companies that have really tried to optimize things and make thick and medium and thin versions of it, even different colors of CA glue. The biggest benefit of CA glue is it's almost instantaneous. You put the glue on, you spray the activator, you put the two pieces together, count to five, and it's solid. CA glue can be great for putting together small things. You can use it in conjunction with wood glue as a clamp that you use in process. You put a dab of CA glue and your activator spray next to your wood glue, and that will hold it down in place while the wood glue is drying. It does work well for things that are not carrying a lot of weight too. CA glue definitely has its limitations, but there's way more uses in woodworking than I originally thought. The next thing I wish I knew earlier is don't go cheap on the hardware. I built some furniture early on that had hinges and drawer slides from the big box stores, and they worked fine, but if you're gonna put a bunch of time into building a custom piece of furniture, spend the extra money, get the soft clothes hinges, get the undermount drawer slides, get the nicer stuff so the furniture you build looks really classy and really nice. In addition to making videos like this, one of the things that I also do is sell plans on my website. I have a fair amount of plans up there that I'm really proud of, put a lot of time into it. If you're interested and wanna build some stuff for your shop, 
make sure to check those out. The next thing that I wish I knew about earlier is sanding. Sanding is one of those things that nobody really likes. Sometimes people will get impatient and will start sanding with an 80 or 100 grit and then move immediately to a 220 to make it really smooth. What you should be doing is stepping up each time so that you start at 80 or 100, 120 or 150, 180, 220. That way you're sanding off the roughness of the previous grit. If you skip grits or you don't sand enough, it leaves a rougher finish on it and you're gonna regret that when you see your final piece. Always make sure to sand with the grain even if it's in a tight spot. The minute you start sanding across the grain, those ridges will be very visible. Also make sure you sand evenly and consistently. You can do this by drawing with a pencil across the piece you're sanding and sand off all those pencil marks and then do the next grit Draw across with the pencil again, sand off those pencil marks. That way you get consistent, even coverage with your sander. Sometimes you'll have areas where you have to sand a little bit more in one area to get out some glue or to get out something that's there. And there's always the temptation to take your sander and tilt it just a little bit to dig in and work one spot for a while. We've all done that before. The problem is that when you do that, it creates these little divots and dips. And depending on if this is a visible surface or if it's going to be a surface that's touched, you'll feel those dips. So try to sand it as evenly and smoothly as possible. And don't dig in unless you absolutely have to. Another thing that I wish I knew about earlier is the importance of sharp tools. When I first started doing woodworking, I assumed that the chisels that I got from the store came to me already sharpened. They were factory sharpened. I quickly realized that that is definitely not the case. Chisels and tools with a large blade like that don't usually come very sharp. They usually will do a factory grind to give it the look. Sometimes they'll put a little bit of an edge on it, but you need to step that up. Learn how to sharpen your blades really well because a sharp chisel is significantly easier to work with than a dull chisel. Especially if you're working with a chisel in softwoods, that has to be razor sharp. For me, I tried doing the diamond stones and the wet stones so that I could get the perfect grind on it, but I didn't want to spend all my time sharpening chisels, so I ended up getting a sharpening station that helps me get it done a lot faster. When you're buying chisels, don't buy the cheap ones that you find at the big box stores. The metal on that is not very good quality and it's not going to hold an edge very long. Go to the woodworking stores, buy at least mid-range chisels. I really like the set that I have because it's not super expensive, but it's also not the cheap stuff. Finally, the last thing that I wish I knew earlier was the importance of squareness. Make sure that you have a little square like this, or like this, that you can use to check the squareness of all of your blades, your fences, and everything. You have to almost be obsessive about this because if your blade is off by one degree, you won't notice it until you try to glue the boards together. So on the table saw, make sure that you check every time you adjust an angle, make sure you check it with your square. Same thing on a miter saw. It's easy for a miter saw to come back and be off by just a little bit, just one degree. Check it in both directions, up and down along the blade and across the back of the fence. If you're cutting something at an angle, use a digital angle finder to be able to get the exact angle of that. For a 90 degree cut, I'm always gonna be using the square over the digital angle finder, but if I'm doing a 45, if I'm doing 22 and a half, I'm gonna use that digital angle finder. Part of doing woodworking is learning new things as you go. As you build stuff and make mistakes, you're gonna learn new stuff and you're gonna come up with your own list of what you wish you would have known earlier. You may already even have those things. If you do, let me know in the comments what woodworking things you wish you knew earlier. Now, go build something and we'll see you next time.